Okay, let's start off with running. You guys know the drill. And then punches. Keep your feet moving. I don't care what punches you do. I do jab, cross, hook, uppercut just because it makes sense to my brain from a more up point of view. <clears throat> but as long as your hands are up and your feet are moving, I don't really care what punches you do. Okay, then feet, you're here. Step out and in. Something back there is squeaking. knees. Now when you do this, think about keeping this one bent. It helps you keep your balance and it puts more stress on that leg so you're doing more work. Other side. and ladder steps. So visualize a ladder, or if you have an agility ladder and you want to put it on the floor, but you're stepping through the rungs and then picking your knee up. So you got to pick your knees up. Even if you have a flat, like a agility, my agility ladder is plastic slats with a, like a, not a cord, but it's flat, just a flat rope. And if you don't pick your feet up, you get them caught. Kicks, front, side, back. And if you get your feet caught and you screw the rope up, then you have to do more because you don't get to cut your time down because you messed up the ladder. Okay, so what you need to do now is you need to turn the video off and start the music playing. And while the music is playing, you're gonna do two more rounds. 30 seconds each, running, punches, in and out steps, knees, ladder steps, kicks. Two times through, 30 seconds each. Now when you're done, turn the video back on and come back to me to stretch. So to stretch, reach up. Over to one side. Other side. Put your hands here. Clasp your fingers together. Push your shoulders back. And lift your hands. And then reach for the floor. Over to one side, grab your ankle, pull your chest to your knee. Now with your feet here, relatively close together, turn, I have both heels on the floor, my knees are straight, pull your chin down, your chest down to your front knee. Normally we do this stretch much more extended, but with your feet close together, you get more of a stretch in your hamstring. Make sure you keep your chin up. Then push back and stretch your hip flexor. to the center, toes straight forward, knees out, grab your ankle, pull your chest to your knee. So chin is up, then turn your feet, keep the knees straight, keep your chin up, chest down towards the front knee. Push back, stretch your hip flexor. 
then have a seat. Put your bottoms of your feet together, and then take your hands and tuck them right up against your back here so that you're not end up, you don't want to scrunch your back like this. I actually, my feet are sliding, so I'm gonna put them against the, chair, the table and then put my hands here to keep my back straight and the sun is in my eyes, so get closed and push your knees down. And then you have to put your feet out, come over to one side. So what I'm doing here is my ribs are coming down towards my thigh, They're coming to the side. Then you're going to come up and you're going to turn the front of your chest towards your knee and reach out and grab again. And same thing on the other side. Turn towards your knee. Now we're gonna reach to the center, and when you do this, I don't want you to do this. Okay, I want you to lift your chin and push your chest forward so your back is flat and reach your elbows toward the floor. If you've got that and it's easy, pull your feet in closer and still reach your elbows to the floor. And then if you need more, put your feet together and put your elbows on the floor on the outside. And pull your feet in. Heels are on the floor. Rock back and forth. Okay, this is easier feet apart, knees apart, toes pointed straight forward, feet closer together is harder. Put your hands down, straighten out your legs. And up. Okay, three exercises. Um, I'm gonna show them to you. And then again, I want you to stop the video, turn the music on, and do each one of them for a minute. Okay, the first one, I'm gonna, I think you can see me okay. The first one are inchworm push-ups. So you do the inchworm push-up. You start here, you bend down, you put your hands on the floor, you walk them out to the plank. You do a push-up. You walk them back in. You stand all the way up. Walk them down. Okay, you can do on your knees if you want. In either case, your back has to be flat and your chin has to be up. Okay, so that's the first one. The second one is toe touch sit-ups. <clears throat> so you're gonna start here on your back, straight out. I'm gonna come up. My right hand is gonna touch my left foot. Then my left hand touches my right foot. So opposite foot down. Okay, and the third one is a lunge front kick. So what I want you to do is I want you to step back to the lunge and then ideally, right from here, up to the front kick, and back down on the same side. So ideally, your foot is only touching in the back. Okay, if that doesn't work for you, here, 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 and down. Okay, so like I said, stop the video, turn the music on, a minute each, into our push-ups, toe touch sit-ups, and lunge front kick. Okay, so this month we're working on accuracy. So we're gonna work on some techniques. We're gonna work on proper body positioning for those techniques. Um, being sure that you're hitting the target with the right part of your body. And then we're also going to put some targets there to hit. So we're gonna start off with a jab. Okay, a jab comes straight out from your shoulder. Okay, you're, you're your wrist needs to be straight. If you're angled in any direction, you're gonna hurt your wrist. You wanna hit with these first two knuckles. And then, so I'm starting my fighting stance, uh, guard stance, I guess you could call it. And I'm going to punch straight out from the front. Okay, as I do that, I'm rotating this hip a little bit on the, so my front hip on the toe of my front foot. And I'm also, as I do it, I'm pulling this shoulder up a little bit. So this hand is up covering this side of my face, but because this arm is extended, this side of my face isn't covered. But by bringing my shoulder up, I've at least covered my neck and the bottom of my face. So let's do 10 on each side. One, two, three, 
four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And then on the other side, if this is your dumb side, you're going to find this doesn't work quite as well. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, then we're going to do a cross. So, um, jab is your front hand, cross is your back hand. I'm doing it with my hands here. You can do it with your hand this way too, whichever one suits your brain. Mine wants to go this way. Okay, but especially if you're going this way, you want to make sure you have a straight line here. No up or down. That will hurt your wrist. Straight line here. You're hitting with these first two knuckles. So I'm going to do a jab cross now. So when I do my jab cross on the first one, back hand is up on the first one like we practiced the jab. I rotate my hip. I'm rotating on the toe of the front foot. And then I'm going to push off the floor with my back toe and rotate my body way into the cross. Okay, so I'm throwing both of these at a height of the face, throat or nose of someone who's the same height as I am. So let's do 10 sets on each side. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And then on the other side. One, two, three. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Then I'm going to add a hook punch. Okay, hook punch does not do this. A hook punch, whether you're throwing it from your front hand or your back hand, in this case, we're going to throw it from our front hand. All I'm doing is leaving my hand right where it is. This is a close in technique. I just bring my elbow up and I rotate my hip. So it's just coming up and around. It's the hip rotation that drives this. So if I was doing front hand, back hand, it's front hand, back hand. And from this angle, you can see I'm not swinging my hands. I just lift my elbow, rotate my hips, lift my elbow, rotate my hips. So we're going to add that to the jab cross that we did. So we're going to go jab. So you're rotating your front foot, front hip on the jab. Other hand is covering your face. Pull that hand in, rotate to the cross, pull it back, lift the elbow, rotate to the hook. So I'm not going jab, cross, hook. Here, right about here is a good place to get hit in the head. I'm going jab, cross, hook. Okay, so let's do 10 sets on each side like we did with the other. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, Eight, nine, ten, and the other side. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, now we're gonna do a back leg round house kick. We spent a lot of time working on kicks last week, but I want you to think about when you do your back leg round house kick is I'm gonna chamber. Initially, I can start with the front kick chamber and then I'm gonna rotate to the round kick chamber. Okay, so now, so I'm starting with my knee up, keeping my knee facing my target and kicking. Okay, so I'm gonna do some of these traveling forward. One, I can't get 10 in before I run into the camera. Two three, and then I'll go back the other way. One, two, three. Okay, then we're going to add that to the combo. So jab, cross, hook, back leg round toes kick. And we're going to do it traveling. So we'll start here uh, in your left guard stance. Jab, cross, hook, keep your hands up, back leg round toes kick. Jab, cross, hook, back leg round, jab, cross, hook, back leg round, and going back the other way, jab, cross, hook, back leg round, jab, cross, hook, back leg round. Okay, if you're going to use this as a sparring technique, 
the jab and cross would happen here. You might actually step in a little bit to throw the hook, and you might be more likely to throw a front leg round house kick because you're really close to the person that you're hitting. Um, unless they step back. If you throw the jab, the cross, you chase them down, you throw the hook, they step back further, then the roundhouse kick makes, the back leg roundhouse kick makes sense. So there's two things that I want you to do here. I want you to find a partner, and I want you to have them hold out a target for you. Okay, if you have a focus pad in your house that's ideal, otherwise a small pillow or a piece of paper, and I want you to draw an X in the middle of it. So then you're going to, your partner's gonna hold like this for the jab cross, and then like this for the, the, uh, hook, the hook punch, and the other side of it for the roundhouse kick. So they're gonna hold here and then here. So jab, cross, hook, roundhouse kick. I want you to do that with your partner. And then the other thing that I want you to do is I want you to put a partner there. Don't actually hit them. You might wanna do this open hand in case your control is not what you would like it to be. And I want you to throw a jab figure out on, your, on the person where your target's gonna be. Throw the cross, figure out where the target's gonna be. Throw the hook, figure out where your target's gonna be. Figure out if you need to step back or have them step back every time you throw the punch and figure out where your distancing is to make a way to make that rear leg roundhouse kick make sense. Okay, lots of forms right now. Um, I'm gonna go through each form. Um, we're gonna talk about what part of our body we're hitting with since we're working on accuracy and what part of our target we're hitting. Um, do your form and all the ones of a lower rank and then just keep repeating them until we get to the end or skip the video ahead to the weapons at that point, self-defenses and weapons at that point. So we started with basic form one. This is for tungsten or white belts, okay? Look, chamber, step, and we say block, but what you're doing really is striking the inside of someone's leg with a hammer fist. Step forward, punch to the solar plexus. Look over your shoulder, chamber, step, block, but it's a strike to their leg. Step, punch to the solar plexus. Look to the front, index, left foot comes in, left hand comes up, step out, block, strike the leg, and then three times step and punch. And do this, I'd like you to do this. Videotape yourself or do it in the mirror so you can see that your shoulders are square here and that you're not pulled back like this. Okay, if your back toes are pointed off to the corner, it's gonna mess, set off your hips, which will set off your shoulders. Everything needs to be facing forward. So three, four. Okay, three, four to turn. Look over your shoulder. Drop the right hand, left hand comes up, left foot comes in, three, four to turn, low block, step and punch. Other way, look, chamber, step, block, step and punch. To the back, look, Chamber, step, block. You're hitting here three times, step and punch. One, two, three. Three quarter turn. Look over your right shoulder. Pull the left hand up to your ear, right hand down. Left hand comes up to your right ear, right hand down to your left hip. Left foot comes in, steps back. Shingle chassis, low block, step and punch. And then back to the right. Look over your shoulder. Right hand comes up to your left ear. Left hand comes down to your right hip. So your full body's covered here on this chamber. Step, turn, block, step and punch. Okay, white belts, you're practicing that at least 10 times. Okay, orange belts and blue belts. Your form this month is Kichuhyang Sambu, basic form three. We did the beginning of this last week. So one, so I'm gonna start a punch at my head. The block, the transition, the stance transition, moves my head away from the attack, and the block catches their arm and pulls it down. Two, step and punch. Punch the solar plexus. One, two, and then this block is just like basic form one and two. One, okay, then this hand is gonna come up as an index. I step forward to a horse stance and punch. Okay, my punch is a little bit uphill from my shoulder. It's not here, it's here. So if my hand is here, when I stand up, my hand stays at the same place. When I bend down, the hand stays at the same place, so it's a little bit uphill from my shoulder. The intention here is that you're hitting the armpit of someone who's the same height as you are, and there's lots of nerves and blood vessels there. If you hit them really hard, you will dead in their arm. So two more, three, four, three quarter turn. Hands chamber here, left one's away from me. Left foot steps in, straight back. Settle and block, 
step and punch. To the right, step and punch. And back up, this is not gonna fit. One, low block. Two, three, four. Three quarter turn. Hands come up. Left hand is further away from me. It's not here in front of my face, it's down low. Left foot comes in, goes straight back, turn to the cat stand to block, step and punch. Other side. And step and punch. Okay, so if you're a beginner, a bunch of times through action karate form one, and then at least 10 times through action, right, action karate form one. Basic form one, and at least 10 times through basic form three. Advanced class, green belts, brown belts, red belts. You guys are doing Chilsung Eero this month. So we start here. This part is not new. Slight index. Drop. Hands come up. This is a breathing, showing control of breathing. Your, the hinge comes from your elbow. Open. Turn. Left foot index is in. Step back. Grab the back of the person's head. You're pulling the back of their head in and you're doing a palm strike to their solar plexus. Index in. This is all very slow. It's all very stylized. Chop the neck. And then the next move is at speed. Chimple chassis, stepping punch, solar plexus. Chamber both hands, palms down. Right foot steps in. My right foot's going to step out and I'm making a circle. The circle's going across, but it's also coming down because it's the, the, the target's down here. So they start here. And they come down and across. And I settle to Choi Ha Don Chasi. Right foot index is in. Hands come up. So when I did Choi Ha Don Chasi, my knife hit my bridge hand was hitting right above their knee. Back out, chop the neck again. This is slow and stylized. And then the next move is at speed. Step and punch. And I'm going to step in. Bring my hands in here. Open them up to a rainbow. They make a rainbow like this. Think. Eat the rainbow, Skittles. Okay, as my hand comes up, my left foot steps back. So once my hands are out, this is very similar to the move we did at the beginning. It's actually the same as the move that we did at the beginning. I grab the guy's head. As I come through so we're at chassis, my right hand comes forward. Um, palm heel to the solar plexus. Next move is basic form three. Chill sun ilro. And chill sun ilro again. Okay, so target. You're blocking a hook punch to your head. Actually, that's one's on this side. Blocking a hook punch to your head. Blocking, a parrying a straight punch. Step in, punch up under the arm. So I'll do it in the other direction. One. Two. Three. Four. One. Two. Three, one, two, three, four. Okay, so there's four new moves this week, but one of them you've already did at the beginning of the form, and the other three you've done in other forms, so that's not new. Ten times. Okay, first degree black belts. You guys are doing... Row high. So this part we worked on last week. Okay, so from here, my this crane stance, my hip is facing the front, my knee is facing the side. I'm gonna step forward, chingle chassis, center block, step forward, chingle chassis, punch, punch. Okay, so these are punches to solar plexus. Someone is trying to kick that leg. I'm gonna get my foot out of the way and then drop my weight down and strike their leg. And then as they fall forward, pull right back so they don't land on my leg, punch them in the solar plexus. Okay, then I'm going to, this whole next phrase or rest of this phrase is traveling forward. So my left foot is forward, I'm gonna put my weight on it. They're trying to kick my leg so I'm already committed to going forward. I'm just going to pull my leg up out of the way. Step forward. Block. Okay, so we'll do it, the whole thing going the other direction. Yep. One. Two. Three. Four. Okay, 
Now, so and so and punch. Step one, block. Two, step forward, punch, punch. They try to kick my leg. I get my leg out of the way. Drop my weight, hammer to the inside of their leg. Get out of the way of them falling and punch. Okay, I'm gonna come forward to them. I've already committed to going forward though. So my, as they try to sweep my leg, so my weight's already on my left foot. So I'm bringing the right one up, out of the way. Low block with my right hand, left hand is up high. Step forward, block a punch. Step forward again, punch, punch. Okay, rewind that if you need to see it again. Second and third degree black belts. Pill song. We're here. Block one, left, right, step back. This is what we call this the pill song. I come through Soko Rip Chassis. I'm blocking a punch to my head. Rotate to Tringle Chassis, punch the solar plexus. Right foot moves through Soko Rip Chassis. Block a punch to my head. Chungle chassis, punch the solar plexus. Right foot moves again. Double block. Okay, right foot's gonna move again. It's gonna index in and out. My left hand is going to scoop and do a yuck pseudo to the neck. I'm gonna do a left front kick. So back, left hand is up, left foot is back. The foot under that yuck pseudo is gonna kick and I'm gonna punch. So, so kick them in the probably solar plexus, bring them down a little bit, punch them in the throat. Then I'm gonna leave this hand out as an index. I'm gonna come around, my hands are gonna chamber here, and I'm gonna do a center block, punch, punch. Okay, so I'm doing the, I'm going in the other direction. Block, block, right foot steps back, block, punch. Right foot steps back again, block, punch, Right foot moves again, diagonal to the back corner, block. Right foot's gonna move, left hand is gonna scoop. Yuck pseudo, right hand's chambered here. Left front kick, land forward punch solar plexus. Keep this arm out as an index, block, punch, punch. So this is facing the back of the room now. Okay, so second and third degree black belts, that's your new form. Fourths and fifths, Dragon on a rock, um, very different form, cool form. Um, we're gonna add, I think, I'm not sure where everybody is video wise. I'm not even sure where everybody is. I'm gonna add a couple more moves from where I think we are. Okay, so we start here. This could be stylized. It could be somebody is grabbing you, you come down, you slam your cupped hands into their ears. And then someone throws a punch. And step into Basai Chasi, block, Japanese cat stance, reinforce punch. Right foot step forward, Basai Chasi again, block. Left foot forward, Japanese cat stance, uh, hammer fist. Turn to the back, it turns over, hammer fist again, bring it back. Hands come down, they come up, they grab the throat, pull it in. Front kick, solar plexus. Chop to the neck, roll and step, right foot in, left foot out to, to through Soko Rip Chassis, chop to Chingle Chassis, punch. Back leg, so my right leg is going to kick, solar plexus, and as they're buckling, my left hand is gonna punch them in the throat. Foot's gonna reach amber, hands are gonna come to cup and saucer on your right hip, horse stance and punch. Then, someone's behind me, I'm pushing me, I'm reaching back and throwing a back fist to them and then a hammer to the groin. Okay, so I'll do it going the other direction. If you have questions, send me a message. Okay, two self-defenses we're gonna to practice today. One from the beginner curriculum and one from the advanced curriculum. The one from the beginner curriculum is lapel grab and punch. So I'm standing here, somebody grabs my collar with the hand on that side and they're throwing a hook punch at me, at my head with that hand. Again, hook punch that we practice in the warm-up. Okay, 
I am going to step back and get my head out of the way of the hook punch. And as I do, this hand is gonna come over the top of the one that's holding my neck or my collar. And I'm gonna drop my weight to break that grip. And now my weight's dropped and I'm gonna come back up, uppercut to the chin. Okay, make sure if you practice this with somebody, you don't actually uppercut them in the chin. I've actually had to go get my front teeth filed because I got uppercutted in the chin and I had somebody once who had to go get stitches here because she bit right through her rod and hook when she got uppercutted in the chin. So don't actually make contact with that. Okay, so it starts here. I'll show you in all the directions. Somebody grabs, they throw the punch. You step away from the punch. You block over the top, down. So when you bend their elbow, it's gonna pull their head in close to you, come up. And then what other ever violence you would like. So from here, they throw the punch. I step back, this arm comes over the top of the one that's holding. My head's out of the way. This blocks the punch. I drop, bend their elbow, uppercut to the chin. <clears throat> Get out of the way, block the punch, bend their elbow, uppercut to the chin. Get out of the way, block the punch. Bend the elbow, uppercut to the chin. So that's an easy one to practice with somebody in your house. Just like I said, don't actually uppercut them in the chin. The other one that we're gonna practice is the beginning of scissor self-defense. And all the teens and some of the adults are going, oh, I love scissors. And some of you are like, no, 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 no. Okay, so I'm gonna show you the way that, the mechanics of how it would be done if you were throwing somebody. <clears throat> and then I'm gonna show you, give you some options if you're working on a wooden floor, especially a wooden floor with bricks right here. I don't know if you can see the bricks in the video. Yeah, you can. The bricks are, are it's a raised heart. So we're not gonna go there. The most important part of this is get out of the way. Someone's trying to punch you in the head. Okay, you're going to get out of the way and block. Then parry and grab their hand. <clears throat> and then I'm going to throw a round test kick to their chest and another round test kick to their chest. But this second one is going to land behind them. So I'm going to take this foot and hook it behind theirs. Now my right foot's going to come down to the floor. My left hands are going to, my hands are going to come to the floor. I'm going to bring this foot up and I'm going to do a hook kick to their stomach. Okay. What you don't want to do when you do this, okay, is get out of the way, kick, kick, and a lot of people switch hands. So they're holding on to the hand when they come down. Well, right here, when you're switching hands, they're going to pull and you're going to be off balance. So once you've turned, let go. Put both of your hands on the floor. Okay, so they're coming at you. Get out of the way, block, parry, grab the hands here for control so it doesn't come back at you as a back fist. I'm going to round test kick to the chest or the face, another round test kick, but land this one behind their foot so it hooks behind their heel. Put both hands down on the floor, hook kick to the solar plexus. Okay, I'll do that again. Get your head out of the way, block. Round toes kick, round toes kick, drop, hands down, hook kick. Okay, so an alternate, if you're practicing this in a place where you can't throw somebody, they're gonna throw the punch at my head. Get your head out of the way, block, parry, round toes kick, round toes kick, land so that you're just behind them, elbow to the head, many times, spin, Elbow to the head, back fist to the face, knee. You don't have to do necessarily that combination of moves, but if you're not going to go down, especially if you're working on a hard surface, if you're not going to throw them, don't just do it halfway. Figure out something that actually makes sense. So they throw the punch, out of the way, block, parry, grab, round house kick, round house kick, axe kick over their shoulder, drag their shoulder down, punch them in the head. Lots of options. Okay, the important part is get your head out of the way and kick them hard a bunch of times. Okay, after that it's gratuitous. Okay, two things with the sticks. Single stick and double stick. So single stick, I'll do this facing both directions. Last week we did the first, mo most of the first. We're gonna add two more moves so that we finish the right hand. So I start here, make sure that you have a hand of distance under this hand which gives you this end of the stick also as a weapon. So I start here, blood cup, courtesy, step back, cover my head. This is covering your head, this is not covering your head. Step forward, high, low, high. Orbit, strike. 
Now the, 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 bow, the stick just made a circle in this direction. I'm going to make the circle keep going in that direction. My right foot's going to follow it, step back, and I'm going to cover my head again. Again, this is head covered, this is not. I'm going to step forward and strike down. I always keep my hand up to protect my face. So if I've only got one stick, the other hand is up. Going in the other direction, blood cup, courtesy, step back, protect your head, do not hit the, the ceiling fan light. Step forward, high, low, high. Orbit, so it comes around your head. If you're looking up at a clock, it's coming around your head clockwise, like you're wiping the sweat off your forehead. Comes around, it strikes, and the stick keeps going in the same direction. Your right foot follows it, you're protecting your head again. Step forward and strike down. Okay, you can practice in that air a bunch of times, and then what I want you to do is find somebody else in your house, especially if you can find somebody who doesn't teach karate. Give them your other stick. Teach them that set and then have them practice it with you. Okay, and then um, intermediate and advanced. You guys need to get your other stick. I'm gonna do this mirror to you, and then I'll do it with my back to you, so I'm going the same way. So I'm doing it mirror, so um, what I'm, I've got, this is my, this is my left side, but I'll be saying right, because it's a mirror, so you can do it facing me. Um, you just take your left stick and put it on your left, your, so I want to do the other side. We did that already. We did last week. We did one, two, three. So we're going to do the other side this week. So for you, it's going to be the left side. You're going to take your left hand stick and put it on your left shoulder. Your right hand stick and put it on your, your right hand stick, put it on your left ribs. Yeah, it's very confusing to do the other direction. Then I'm going to go left, right, left. Bring it back to the right side because eventually they're going to go together and then bring it back to this side. Left, right, left, and back to the left side. Left, right, left, and back to the left side. Okay, so if you're doing it with me, we start here. And it's left, right, left, back to the right, back to the left. So my left hand stick is on my left shoulder. My right hand stick is on my left ribs. Left, right, left, and back. Left, right, left, and back. Okay. Honestly, I think this is the coolest of what we do. Four different stick sets. This is my favorite one. I think this is the coolest one. I want you to practice that. Okay, if you're going, I can't figure out where my hands are going. Play the video back. The easiest way to learn it. Well, actually, you can either way because I'm doing it mirror. So whichever one makes more sense for your brain, but just keep doing it over and over and over. Okay, this is the advanced class bow form. So if you are in the karate kids class, this is your form this cycle. You don't have an open hand form. If you were in the Tung Sudo class, if you are two or one straight brown or red belt, this is your weapon, but you're also learning an open hand form. Um, so you guys are just gonna have to work hard, deal with it. Okay, so we did the beginning of this form last week. We're gonna finish the first three phrases today. I'm gonna do it in both directions. So we start here, Chibi, shut up, Kinyet. We start, bow comes up to the corner, it's in your right hand, left hand comes underneath, grab, palm up, pull it back to your shoulder. Not on top of your shoulder, but on the outside of your shoulder, step and strike. Turn your feet. All I'm going to do with the bow is this. Switch your feet so you're going to the other corner, step and strike. Now somebody's trying to hit my right leg. I'm going to pull my right leg out of the way and take the right hand end of the bow, which is in the front, drop it down and push it across so it's outside my knee and protects my knee. And I'm going to bring it up and over and break the person's collarbone as I land in Chingle Chassi. Front end is on their collarbone, back end is on my left hip. I'm going to strike them up, down, side, side. Then I'm going to pull back to a cat stance, disarm, and strike. And the disarm, what I'm doing with the disarm is somebody's bow is coming at me. I'm putting mine in, catching their bow, circling it out of the way so I throw it and then stabbing them. And then I'm gonna go exactly the same thing on the other side. It's the same foot on the other side, we're not switching sides. So my look over my shoulder, my right foot tracks across, right hand bow and front end swings across, protects my right knee. Step the triple chassis, break their collarbone. Up, down, it's on my left hip, side, side. Pull back to the cat stance, again, disarm, and step. Okay, I'll do it going the other direction too. 
We start here, one, left hand comes underneath, grab, outside of your shoulder, strike. Two, turn to that corner, I'm just gonna shift my hips and take the end of the bow that's on my left hip and strike with it. Then I step and take the end that's out in the front, pull it back to my left hip. Protect the right leg. Pull into the Japanese cat stance, get it out of the way. Front end of the bow drops down. Pushes across to protect your knee. Step forward and jiggle chops to your front stance. Break their collarbone. Back end of the bow is on your left hip. Up, down, side, side. Pull back to the cat stance. Disarm and step. Look over the shoulder. Swing the right foot around. Right hand end of the bow is in the front, comes down, it swings around with your foot. Step back out to Chungle Chassis. Break their collarbone. Back end of the bow is on your left hip. Up, so you're hitting groin, collarbone, ribs, ribs. Pull back to the cat stance, disarm, and step. That's almost half, a little bit more than a third. Okay, so I want you to practice that. This is by far the hardest weapon to master because it's, well, this isn't, this isn't a screaming stick, but your bow should be ideally about your height, maybe a tiny bit. I use one a little bit shorter than me. Some people use a little bit taller, but about your height is a rule of thumb. And doing this without smacking yourself or getting caught in the bow or hitting something behind you um, makes it learning, if this is the first time you do bow, makes learning it much harder. So if you're having trouble handling it to begin with, don't stress about it, we got plenty of time. Okay, black belt bow form. This is for all the black belts, whether you are a tungsten black belt or an AK black belt. It's called bow form three. It, in my mind, it is not at all related to basic bow form one or basic bow form two. We're gonna add a couple moves from last week and I'll show it to you in both directions. So it starts here, bow on the right side, right hand's facing forward, bow is uh, in the front of your shoulder. This hand comes up, it grabs the bow here. This is not really bow, like I said, I can't use it inside the kitchen. I'm gonna step my left foot back to Soko Ripchasi, horse stance, facing that corner, bring the bow way outside this knee. So if someone's trying to hit that knee, I'm protecting it, and then bring it over to protect this knee. Then I'm gonna turn my hips forward as I do a, a figure eight, strike forward. Left foot's gonna step forward to very wide Basai Chasi. I'm gonna block here. So the angle of my bow is here, and then I'm gonna step out to right shingle chassis, bring the bow under this arm, under my right arm. Okay, then this is, a, my left foot is gonna index in, step out to a rear leaning stance and block. And then left foot's gonna drag out to a left shingle chassis and strike across. Okay, so I'll do it in the other direction. Grab your bow, left foot steps back, Protect the outside of your left knee. Swing it around, protect the outside of your right knee. I'm coming through Soaker Chassis as I do my figure eight. So I land in Chiddle Chassis as I strike. Step, Basai Chassis. The end that's at the back is high. The end that was at the front is low. Step to right Chiddle Chassis over the top. Strike so that the left hand end is under your right ribs. Left foot index is in. Out to rear leaning stance, block. I haven't switched my grip on the bow. I don't have a death grip, my fingers are relaxed, but I haven't switched my grip. And then I step out to left shingle chassis and strike across. So the back end is out and the left hand end comes back to my ribs. 